Well, today is September 2nd. Today is going to be a very interesting day. Now, this one is all about Pro Wrestling Noah. We have three days of them. Ones that I haven't seen yet, which is, of course, part of the N1 Victory, which is the annual tournament. We have day six, seven, and eight. Now, as you know, it's nowhere near done just yet. So we will find out how far each of the competitors in their respective blocks will progress. So let's keep an eye on that. But also we got some news updates to find out what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling. So get ready for another episode of the Lead It Wrestle Show. Welcome everybody to the Lead It Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Rod here. So let's begin with day six of Pro Wrestling Noah's N1 Victory. Like I said before, earlier in the beginning of the video, we're not even done just yet. Now, I'm excited to see how far we're willing to go. So, let's talk about it. Now, our first match we have is from the B block. We have Kenya Okada taking on K the Supernova Keito Kiyomiya. Now, Kenya Okada so far has, has no wins. Now, um, Keito Kiyomiya has some wins here and there. But, however, we'll, this is a very interesting match because, as you know, Kiyomiya has been one of the most well recognizable wrestlers we know he is very gifted very talented but however uh there are times he cannot pull the or execute the win but this time he was able to pull up a very good win against okada and i believe right now uh, okada uh, king okada has about um just five losses but as for kiyomiya in my in the other hand he has right now only two wins and three losses with four points now the obvious question is will he able to go even further well that's the obvious question that we don't know just yet so we will stay on top of that now a block action we have anthony green versus ideki suzuki now keep in mind ideki suzuki is a fantastic wrestler one of the most impressive grapplers i've ever watched you know that that can camp style of wrestling you know i have to say i love what he does i have to say anthony green he put a lot of good effort up but however um suzuki he is one of the most impressive wrestlers in the, this particular style he picked up the good win by submitting anthony green and of course as you know he can speak english he gave him some talk and show him some big respect so right now i think um suzuki has about uh Seven uh, with, with uh, three wins, one loss, and a draw. So basically, he has a total of seven points at this point. As for Anthony Green, he only is with one win and four losses, with just two points at the most. So we don't know for sure if he'll be able to succeed even further. Now back to the B block, we have Jack Morris versus the Machine Takashi Sugiura. Now. Jack Morrison has been very impressive here and there during the tournament. As you know, this is his first time being in this tournament. I have to say, um, he really put up a good fight. But however, when it comes to a veteran like Sugiura, you know for a fact this is Sugiura's ball. He picked up a very good win against him by pinning him. So I think Sugiura, I ha um, in my opinion, he has four wins and one loss with a total points of eight. As for jack morris only two wins and three losses with the total points of four so he not bad for now i feel like he's holding on as dear possible if he wants to succeed now back to a block we have of course hijo del dr wagner jr taking on go shiozaki um 
a former GHC heavyweight champion. I have to say, this was a very impressive match by these two men. As you know, Go Shiozaki, he's been around the block. He has been the champion. But he's facing a third-generation wrestler we're talking about. As you know, uh, Hijo de Dr. Wagner. His dad is Dr. Wagner Jr. His grandfather, Dr. Wagner. I have to say, this was a good moment. But however, it was Go Shiozaki with a very good win against uh, Hijo de Dr. Wagner. And he showed him some respect right at the end of the match. I have to say, I would love to see more of Hijo de Dr. Wagner Jr. being in uh, Noah. So hopefully that's the case. So right now, I believe um, Go Shiozaki has... Uh, three wins and two losses with six points. Hijo de Do del Dr. Wagner has two wins and three losses with four points. So he's barely holding on. So we'll see how far he'll go right now. Now back to B block action. We have Satoshi Kojima, the former GHC heavyweight champion, taking on Batsu Katsu Funaki. Now, according to what commentators mentioned, these men have the same kind of um, impressive career that they have. They have been in... in New Japan, Noah, All Japan, but they never actually crossed each other before in any other promotion. So this is the first time. So you got Funaki, who's a fantastic striker, but you got a powerhouse like Kojima. Which one will walk out? Now, you know for a fact that Funaki would put any submission move on him, but it was, of course, Satoshi Kojima with the big lariat that allowed him to win the match and <laughs> giving him two points. So Kojima has... At the point, at this point, uh, total points of four wins and one loss with eight points. As for Funaki, two wins and three losses with four points. So I have to say Funaki also holding on, but we'll see how far he'll progress. And finally, our next match we have, of course, um, the A Block Masato Tanaka taking on um, his, a friend and teammate. Kazuyuki Fujita. I have to say it was a very good match. I have to say amazing. Now, Fujita, as you know, he's a beast. He probably would have won it if he applied the beast bomb. But however, Masato Tanaka put up every, every effort to put up. He even gave him the running elbow onto him that sealed the deal to win the match. And I believe Masato Tanaka has, with three wins and two losses with six points, um, what's his name? Uh, Fujita. He has the same thing, three three wins and two losses. So it was a great, but I, what it was great is, is how they smiled at each other. It's like they practically enjoyed this match. I wouldn't be surprised if they would decide to do this again, like once the, G, the N1 victory is done. So I have to say the N1 is pretty good. So there are still some wrestlers are still alive. Others are barely holding on. But like I said, we don't know how far they're going to go. So right now, let's keep moving forward with the N1 with day seven that took place on August 27th. Okay, day seven of the N1 Victory 2022 by no Pro Wrestling Noah. It opened up with the A Block, Anthony Green taking on, of course, our current GHC heavyweight champion, Keno. Now, Anthony Green, I don't know if he could survive a guy like Keno because we've seen Keno, what he can do in the ring. However, we know Keno, he's all about trying to take out his opponent, trying to be a total badass that he is. But he did put him in a sleeper hold. But however, Anthony Green had no other choice but to tap out. So I believe Keno, at the moment, he has about... Um, Yes, uh, nine points with four wins, one loss, and a draw. So basically, he has about the same points as Hideki at the point. So we'll see what happens then. And as for Anthony Green, he still is only with one win and five losses. So he most likely could be done for the N1, but we'll see how it goes on the following day. Now, B-block action. We got Kinyo Okada taking on Masa Kiyomiya, uh, Kiramiya. Now, you probably can guess this one is going to be a little more different. Uh, as you know, Kinyo Okada is currently winless. No win so far. But it was the strength of Masa Kiyomiya that, uh, the Kiyomiya that picked up the victory when he cranked the knee of Okada and had no other choice but to tap out. I don't need to tell you that, that Okada ha has record because he's winless. But as for Masa Kiyomiya, he has about three wins 
and three losses with a total points of six. Now back in the A block, we have of course Hijo de Dr. Wagner Jr. taking on Hideki Suzuki. Now these two guys know each other pretty well. They came from the same unit, uh, Sugiura Goon. But if you guys remember this, uh, Wagner and his tag team partner Rene Dupree lost the GHC Heavyweight Tag Team titles to Hideki Suzuki and Timothy Thatcher. So this is going to be a perfect test for Wagner to put uh, himself to the test against someone who defeated him in a tag match. But however, we know how, gil uh, how gifted and incredible technical aspect um, Suzuki is. I was surprised that he put a Billy Robinson maneuver on Wagner, the, the bridge, and won in that fashion. I was like, wow. He used whatever he could that his mentors have taught him and gave him the win. So right now, I believe Hideki Suzuki, he has, uh, yes, he has nine points at this point. He's tied with Keno. So four, uh, four wins, one loss, and a draw. As for Wagner, he only has two wins and four losses with four points. Next up, we got Jack Morris versus Masakatsu Funaki. Now, I have to say Morris did a, did a pretty good job, but however, Funaki, he's a far more better wrestler. He is very technical savvy, a bit of a striker, but he did a pulled off the hybrid blast on him, putting like giving him a crunch on his neck down, kind of like a similar to a brain buster, and that's how he won in that fashion. So I believe Funaki he has um, the current he has about let's see yeah, just six points with three wins and three losses. As for Jack Morris, uh, he only has uh, just two wins and four losses with four points. So we'll see what happens then then on. Now back to the A block, we got Mas Masaaki Mochizuki taking on Kazuki Fujimara. Now, I would have assumed in this tag that Fujimara, uh, Fujita would have won this match by applying the Beast Bomb because the guy is an absolute beast. But the way he finished him off, he gave him a penalty kick. Yes, folks, a penalty kick that knocked him out, giving him the win. So I believe right now with Mochizuki, he only has one win in the tournament, but the rest he only has five losses as for Fujita he had he has four wins and two losses with the total points of eight so he's good at this point now our next match we have of course is Tak uh, Takashi Sugura taking on Kato Mia Kato uh, Mia I have to say this was a very tough match for the supernova reason is you got Sugura who's a freaking death machine the guy knows how to pick his opponent apart but somehow Kiyomi was it took at least not one not twice not three but four shining wizards to take out Sugiura I'm like dang this guy put everything on the line to, just to put this guy down and and it worked so I believe Monday sorry about that anyway uh what was it oh yeah so it took four Shining Wizards for Kiyomiya to pick up the win. Now, I believe right now Kiyomiya has with eight points with four wins and two losses. As for Sugiura, he has about the same thing, four wins and two losses. So they're both tied. Now, back to the A block, we got Mas uh, Masato Tanaka taking on Go Shiozaki. I have to say this is another of those power strengths in with these two individuals. So basically, I was like impressed with it. However, it was Go Shizaki with a big, strong lariat to take out uh, Masato Tanaka, giving him the win. I believe right now, um, Go Shizaki, he only has four wins and two losses with eight points. As for um, Masato Tanaka, he only has three wins and three losses with total points of six. Now, our main event we have is Satoshi Kojima taking on. Naka, uh, Katsuhiko Nakajima I have to say what a s impressive match now the story is Nakajima as you know he already won two straight N1 victory uh, tournaments 2020 and 2021 will he make 2022 his year well we'll find out but however this match was unbelievable now Kojima did everything in his power to try to take him down but however no one could match the powerness and 
capabilities of Nakajima. So he picked up a very strong win, giving him uh, the total points of eight now, which uh, I believe he has, mm, let's see, Nakajima. He has eight points with four wins and two losses. Kojima, he's about the same thing. So we have a bit of a tie. So what happens the following day could change everything. So we'll be following on day eight. And from there on, we'll finish off all of it in this particular episode. episode. So let's move on with day eight right now. Okay, we're in day eight. Now this particular day is on the 28th of August. This was the final who wins the respective blocks in A and B. So whoever wins the respective blocks will meet on September 3rd. And the winner, of course, you know, will get a chance to challenge for the GHC heavyweight title that currently is being held by Keno. So... However, we'll see who ends in the respective blocks starting right now. We have for the A block, Anthony Green versus Mochiazi's, um, Masaaki Mochizuki. Now, in this particular match, these two guys ha uh, were not able to finish off. But however, they did put a lot of good effort. But one thing that was very impressive is the way Anthony Green jumped off onto Mochizuki, but Mochizuki converted it into a pinfall and walked away with a victory. That was a bit of a surprising maneuver. But however, the Mochizuki walked out with with four points. So basically, he does not win. And as for Anthony Green, he only walks away with ends his G, his uh, N one victory with just two points. Now B block action, we got. J uh, Jack Morris taking on the big man himself, Masa Kitamiya. Now, you probably would assume Kitamiya would have won, but I have to say Jack Morris, who's the new guy in the block, new guy in Noah, apparently he had a lot to prove the show. What he can made of, this made of Scot Scottish wrestler, proven why he's there, but he did not give up completely. Now, it would have been bad if he walked up, if he didn't finish the necessary points he wants to gain. So, he pulled off an impressive shooting star press onto Kitamiya, giving him the victory. So I believe right now, Jack Morris walked away with six points, which is not bad. As for Kitamiya, he has the same thing. So Kitamiya and Morris walked out with six points, so they don't advance in the end one victory. Next up, back to the A block. We have Elijo, the Dr. Wagner Jr., taking on Masato Tanaka. Now, this is a good match because, you know, we have, of course, Masato Tanaka. He is a legend in the wrestling world. He still kicks butt in his late in his late 40s. And, of course, Wagner, we all know his history. He's a third-generation wrestler. So you got two bit of legendary status in the ring. However, as you know, um, there were some moments that we know that Wagner could win. But it was a bit of surprising that he was able to pull off a win against Masato Tanaka when he applied the Wagner driver. One, two, three. He ends his N1 victory. Now, um, I believe right now Wagner walked out with a total points of six in the N1. So that he finishes it in that way. As for Masato Tanaka, the same thing. Six points. So, basically, they don't advance at all. Next up, we have... Takashi Sugiura taking on Masakatsu Funaki. Now, these two guys are two of the toughest competitors I've seen so far. Now, uh, ta um, what's his name? Sugiura, he is a very capable wrestler, but you got Funaki, who has a great submission technique and a felt an, an amazing striker. So either way, could have gone uh, in their favor. But however, it was Funaki who walked out with the, with the victory with a sleeper hold. And I don't think Sugiro knew what happened. He probably was disoriented, realizing that he didn't win. So I believe right now, Funaki, he walked out with... Wrong sheet. Oh, yeah. Funaki walked away with eight points. Not bad in this whole thing. However, as for Sugiura, same thing. Eight, no, 
Oh, scratch that. Ten points that Funaki has. My, my writing's a little messed up. So he walked away with ten points so he could be walking out real soon. Could win. How? However, things could change. As for Sugiura, he has only eight points. So Now back to A block. We have Hideki Suzuki taking on Go Shiozaki. Now, surprisingly, company Suzuki into the ring. We have his tag team partner, uh, one half of the GHC heavyweight tag team champions, Timothy Thatcher. Now, as you know, Timothy Thatcher was supposed to be in this tournament, but due to his visa issues, he was unable, so he was replaced. I forgot who took his spot, but, but yeah, it was great to see him, and he was right there in the corner of his tag partner. Now, you probably would have assumed that this match would have ended in a submission because that's what I thought because every submission, every match I see um, Suzuki win, he always wins with a submission. Now, lesser time with pinfalls, but he was able to pick up a good pinfall on Tujo Go Shiozaki and he ends his, G1, his N1 um, victory uh, tournament with 11 points. So, he's cur he went into the lead. So, we'll see how that goes in this tournament. Uh, and as for Go Shiozaki, I believe he has uh, eight points. So, better. Uh, basically, that's how he ends. He walks away with eight points. Now, our next match is B Block. We have Kiyo Kinya Okada taking on Naka uh, Katsuhiko Nakajima. Now, this match ended the most shocking develop. Now, who could forget about Nakajima? What happened in Cyber Fight with? To, uh, to the endo well it looks like it happened again um, but in different circumstances Nakajima kicked him right in the jaw and the ref had to call it so basically in this case uh, Nakajima walked away with the victory with 10 points so he walked out as for Okada well he's winless but it was kind of insane how this happened and he walked away he didn't have a smile he just I don't know if Nakajima is considering that what happened to endo might have been a problem for him because we know he can hit hard as possible so we'll see what happens now our next match is the a block we have this is the final one we have of course Kazuyuki Fujita taking on Keno so this is one of those matches Keno cannot afford to lose in the block however he has to deal with a big powerful guy like Funaki now no, Fujita Fujita he pulled off every spot by taking out Keno's knee every way possible but however he did finish off Keno with the beast bomb giving him the victory so he walked away with uh, Fujita with of course 10 points as for Keno uh, I believe he has 9 however he does not win the block so the only person to won in this in the, in, in the A block is Hideki Suzuki so he will be going to the finals on September 3rd However, the next match will determine who will walk out as the winner for the B block. So we have, of course, um, Satoshi Kojima taking on um, the Supernova, Keito Ki Kiyomiya. I have to say Kiyomiya was impressive, but he was full of heart, determination to win this tournament. But it only did not take one or two or three Shining Wizards to take down the legend himself, Kojima. If you guys want to know how much, how many Shining Wizards it took, it took 10. 10 Shiny Wizards to take out Kojima. I was like, man, this kid is amazing. I mean, this guy should have been already champion by now, but wow. And he won the and he won the match with 10 points. However, because he won this match, announcers announce Kato Kiyomiya is heading to the finals to take on Hideki Suzuki. So those two will face off. So basically, Kiyomiya and Suzuki will meet in the finals on September 3rd, this coming Saturday. And also, do not forget, this will also be the great mood of the last time we ever get to see him. So keep that in mind. I hope everybody's going to enjoy it. So I think that's pretty much it, what we got with the Pro Wrestling Noah. As you know, we finished already with the blocks. Can't wait to see what's going to happen in the finals. So I believe we'll end it right here and end it with some news updates.
Okay, here are some news updates. Um, this was coming from DDT uh, English um, Twitter page. It was revealed that Toto Owashi had to vacate two of his titles. He was the title holder of the Iron Man Heavy Metal Weight title. That's the 24-7 title, if you guys follow that along. And of course, we and he had to vacate the zero, um, the 040 title, which is the above 40 title. The reason he gave up these titles was because he wants to focus more on the KOD uh, tag team titles. As you know, it's being currently held by, uh, what was his name? Katsusada Higuchi and Naomi Yoshimura. So basically, he's want, he's taking this very seriously. So it's still unclear what's going to happen for the other titles, but I'm sure we will find out soon enough. Now, for all you Yoshi wrestling fans out there, you know this particular wrestler. She was in Ice Ribbon. Now she's in... Um, oh, yeah, and she's also a member of the Ozaki Goon, Maya Hihiki. It was announced by Spanish promotion, RCW, um, well, all the way from Spain, that they are bringing back the World Cup tournament, and Maya Hihiki will be on her way there. So this particular tournament will take place on the 22nd of October. Now, Maya Hiki has spoken recently how much she wants to travel and wrestle outside of Japan. And I have to say this is going to be a good opportunity. Now, I'm still not sure if she will be if she speaks Spanish. I know she does speak English. That's and also Korean from my understanding. But in Spanish that's something I don't know, but I'm sure she'll pick that up as soon as possible. So if you guys are a big fan of Maya Yuhiki, uh stay tuned for that. Now, for all you Ref Pro fans out there, it was announced the return of the British J Cup. Yes, if you guys are not familiarized with that, the British J Cup is kind of like similar to the J Cup by New Japan. This one will determine the winner, the challenge for the Cruiserweight title. So we have guys like Al Phantasma, Michael Oku, Yushin Thunder Liger, all winners. Who will be the ones to make history to etch their name in this year's British J Cup? Well, we'll find out because it will take place on the 22nd of October at the Gordon Craig Theater. Now, for all you House of Glory fans out there, if you guys know, House of Glory has announced for their upcoming pay-per-view, Genesis. I'm excited for that. This one's going to take place on the 24th of September. I'm excited. It's still not yet clear who will be participating, but we'll get on it right away. And finally... For all West Coast Pro Wrestling fans out there, there's going to be a special meet and greet on that day for their upcoming event on the 8th of October, Ride the Lightning. We're going to have Japanese wrestlers making their way over there for a special meet and greet. Now, if you guys are from the Bay Area, you guys are going to be so excited. We're going to have Katsuyura Shibata, you know, the trainer from the LA Dojo. He's going to be there. And we have Ben K from Dragon Gate, also going to be there. We have Yoshi Legend. Um... Uh, Chi Guza Nagayo, who also runs the promotion Marvelous, will also be there. And we cannot forget everybody's favorite jungle girl. Jungle Kiona also will have a special mean greet. Now, you can look it up on their webpage or social media. It's going to be a special mean greet before the bell. So if you guys are in the area of the Bay Area, you know you're going to have, you want to be there when that happens. So I think that's pretty much it. So I think it's time for me to call it a day well i hope everybody enjoys this episode i have to say keeping tabs on the n1 victory was stressful i mean i had to keep up with the g1 and the five star grand prix i mean we still got a little way a bit to go with the five star grand prix i'm not gonna lie about that but I'm just glad that the N1 is coming to an end. I don't need to do the point system. So we're just going to see the finals right away on the 3rd of September. I'm whew, very excited to see. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Now, uh, coming up for the next episode, which one, as soon as this video is released, I'll be working on the next one that will not be uploaded until the following morning. Uh, we're going to have in the next episode... Uh, day one of the burning spirit by new japan pro wrestling i'm kind of excited to see what takes place and of course we cannot forget aew rampage and who's going to level up on level up nxt level up to be exact and of course 
um, if there's some news updates, I will post those as well. So, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang. <laughs>